Heck, look, my purse is hanging open right here. How about we move that? What do you think? I'm not going to move it, but I'm going to not make it hang open. <laughs> Oh, you can tell John's not home. I'm living like I'm 11 years old and like free, you know, you know. And that they let me live on my own at all, like without an adult at all. Oh, we gotta move some stuff. I've been making messes, getting ready to weave. That's how I do. Okay. Bongo cha cha cha. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha, if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. He'll be back tomorrow night. I really missed him. But while, while he was gone, or right before he left, I guess right before he left, I bought a fleece from Jim Merrifield. It's a Finn fleece, and they have a couple left, and then they won't have more until their April shearing, just in case you want one or want to contact them. I know a couple of you have bought them, and I bet you there's more people who have bought them that didn't tell them where you saw it. I'm gonna unbox it today and then I'm gonna take you through, cause every time I, I unbox or work with a raw fleece, somebody says, can you go through the whole process with us? And so I'm gonna do that today, but I'm just gonna sample. I'm gonna take out like four ounces and wash it and then I'm gonna comb some of it I'm gonna card some of it and I'm gonna spin a little sample yarn to kind of just to see how I like the different preps and stuff and one crazy thing last year the fleece that I bought you guys saw it in um I think it was a video this spring where I process with no tools and I did one merino fleece and one fin fleece that was this and then I also unboxed it on my channel I'm sorry it wasn't this but it was a fleece from the same farm and that one was I think Ellie May that one was Ellie May and this one is her daughter Elsie May for a minute I thought I bought the same fleece and I was like dang okay so I look at these pictures and I'm like that one's for me. I thought it happened twice in a row, which is kind of funny, but it wasn't. It's the daughter. Let's open this guy up and see what we've got, and then we're gonna go ahead and wash it. Oh, oh, I buy these um, on Raw Wool for sale. There's like a Facebook group, but I will link you to the profile of the farm. And I don't think I'm always talking to Jim, but it says Jim Merrifield on the profile where I buy them. So I will link you guys. This fleece was, I think, $70, which is, I think, pretty reasonable. You know, especially if I've bought one before and I know it's great, I'm willing to pay a little more. We talked about that before. It's like it mitigates the risk a little bit, um, as opposed to when you're buying from someone you have no clue what you're gonna get then I'm not willing to pay as much money but then once I know something's really good I'm willing to pay a little more <sighs> oh and in case anyone's wondering yesterday I did stay in my pajamas literally all day long it's the only day that I got to do that though I've just had stuff to do and like today I gotta go to the post office so I will be well, I'm already out of my pajamas, so. All right. Oh, good, it's on here. Oh, okay, so interesting. This is very interesting. I have never got this before, but I kind of like the idea. It says, Elsie May skirtings, not in weight. So I didn't technically pay for these, but this is what was skirted from my fleece. And you know what, if you are someone who truly I, I can be sometimes, depends on the fleece, who's like, I would rather deal with some really dirty stuff just to get more of this fleece. Like this is kind of a nice little option. Packing slip. I bet the weight's on here. Oh, nope, it just says Elsie May's fleece. Oh, I paid 75, sorry, it wasn't 70, it was 75. And it was shipped in this flat rate box, which was a $20 box. 
And if you guys remember last year, I'm pretty sure it was them. I'm pretty sure. I opened a fleece and they had gotten it in a smaller box. They were able to squeeze it into a smaller box, so they sent me the $5 bill as a refund. I don't know if you guys will remember that. But hey, it was very fun. So, okay, and they're in Buckley, Washington. I really should be more cautious about saying that because I know like if you're in the area, you might want to seek them out even more. But I'm gonna point you down so you can see this. So they have it like squeezed into this box, which is great. And there is a post-it in here. It says, oh, Elsie May, 5.1 pounds. So that's how, that's what the fleece weighs. Do not know what the skirtings weigh, but we'll worry about that later. I'm gonna cut, it's taped shut. They like, looks like they used a vacuum to suck all the air out and then tape it shut, which is great. Cause you can pay less for shipping that way. <laughs> I don't want to here hang on let me put my reading glasses on so I don't cut my hand and yes I can see my hand but I'm trying to cut the tape so I won't cut the bag Ugh, chihuahua okay maybe I don't have the option okay all right we're in Ooh, look at that thing grow. <laughs> All right, so I saw Elsie Mae's picture, not her picture, the picture of her fleece, and I was like, that one's got my name on it. Oh my gosh. Look at these locks. Can you see them? She's piebald. That means she's got spots of different colors, so you're going to see different colors in here, but look at these locks. So this is a white part and I know you're going to be like thinking why is it so dark on the tips you guys that's not unusual at all I mean they live outside so they do get dirty so this is the locks right out of the bag but look at that shine and that crimp see that and this will all wash out I'm not worried about that at all let me see if I can get the other color oh Oh, Elsie May, you must be beautiful. All right, so this is some of the other color in Elsie May's fleece. Looky there, looky there. I'm gonna weigh out a couple ounces. I think I'm gonna wash, I wanna make sure I get at least two or three clean. I'm gonna measure out six ounces and wash that. That should be enough to make sure like I have some good size samples so all right so let me move let me swap this out here's my scale all right so I have this container so I teared the weight on the container so it's at zero on my scale and I'm gonna just put six ounces in here and I think I'm just gonna kind of like try to do um, some gray and some white we want to see that don't we you guys know you do oops <laughs> okay that's 4.95 so we just need a little bit more 5.8 there six ounces exactly let me show you what that looks like that's a pretty good amount we're gonna go wash it and I'm gonna show you guys my washing method it has not changed much since last time. But I will say this about this fleece too, and I'm gonna show you again. So this is what stuns me about their fleeces. And I, okay, let me just say this too. I'm kind of afraid now to tell you guys this stuff because I can't get the colors of cotton I want from Great Northern Weaving now because you've like bought them out. So many colors, they're out. And 
I know that if I tell you guys about them, you'll buy all their fleeces and then I won't be able to get one or they'll get so expensive I can't afford one, but it still seems right if I find one that's really nice or a farm that's really nice that I should tell you guys the truth. So I might be like talking myself right out of being able to buy one of these again, but what I need to show you is this. So I've talked before about sheep living outside. Maybe you heard. It's not a new thing. And about how, I don't understand when people complain about like vegetable matter, hay, that kind of thing. I want to show you, just look at this fleece, okay? There is like nothing as far as hay and grass. I mean, I'm literally looking at the tips, not the inside cut part of the fleece. The amount of like hay or grass or whatever that I can see is, it's not just minimal, it's like, it seems like it's not even there. It's kind of crazy. Let's go wash a fleece. Now, before I start washing, let me say this. There's always somebody who wants to tell me like, how they think I should do it. I've washed a lot of fleeces, guys. I would venture to say I'm in the hundreds. And I've tried a lot of different things. I've tried the really expensive things. You know what they are. I don't have to say what they are. And I will tell you personally, in my opinion, and that's all it is, the only thing that's better about those super expensive things is that they're easier to rinse out. So for me, I don't really even care if there is a tiny bit of soap or soap residue left. So it's not that huge deal to me. I mean, I do try to rinse it, but to me, it's like not that huge of a deal. I'm gonna wash it over and over again while I own it. So. I'm probably gonna wash the yarn right after I spin it. I'm probably gonna wash it right after I finish knitting it or at least soak it, which is kind of the same as rinsing it. So like, look, where's my buddy? Oh, he went back upstairs. So a little bit of residue doesn't really bother me, but for me, that's the only advantage I see. I don't think it gets things cleaner. I think that that's just kind of baloney, but that's me again. And I'm not trying to sell that stuff. So I'm not trying to make up reasons why it's better. You know what I'm saying? There's always somebody telling me how I should be doing things. So feel free. Everyone else does, right? So this is full now of the hottest water I can get out of my hot water heater. We have it set up to the highest setting because we don't have any small children in the house. When I do a small amount, I use this colander. When I do like a big amount, you guys have seen me before or you can go back and see, I will do it just straight in the tub and then pour it through that giant colander basically thing that John made me. You can go back and see it. It was in a processing, I think I washed a Jacob fleece. For soap, I still like Old Blue Dawn. And yes, it's not gonna stay in the colander. It's gonna go all through the water, which is fine. I'm gonna throw on a rubber glove. This is one of my dye gloves. Just because you don't wanna put your hands in the super hot water without some sort of protection. And I'm gonna go straight into the colander. Now, see all that dirt? Ooh, baby. I want to get down in there, right? And then one thing I'm going to do right at the very beginning, of course the dirty water can get in and out easily through the slats in the colander, but if I pull this out, all the dirty water is going to go out. See that? That's normal, by the way. Just in case you decide to do that, this, that is totally normal. And that'll make it more diluted from the really dirty stuff. Does that make sense? And then I'm gonna press it down one more time under the water. I'm just gonna leave this for like 15 minutes for the first wash. Okay, sorry if you can hear my breakfast cooking because you might be able to. But then the next step I do is I will take out the colander and let it drain and then I'll dump the water, all this water 
outside. You can tell that it's already getting pretty clean, but I'm gonna do a second wash on this. This way, a little bit will go down my sink, but it's not gonna be much. So this time I'll put the little bit of Dawn in. I don't want a lot this time. I'm gonna stir it with a dye spoon that has no dye in it. This time, of course, now I want all the soap to go throughout all the water that's in here. But let me just show you, putting this in here, look how clean this is already. See that really closely? That's really getting clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. I am gonna grab my glove and push it under the water. And actually, I think I'm gonna flip it over. Man, I can't believe how clean that is after one wash. I mean, it's pretty much the same as the first one, but still. I'm just gonna do two rinses and then I'll show you what I do with it to dry it. Okay, you can see that this is pretty clear, this water. See that? So it's been two rinses. I just do 10 minutes a piece about because with rinses, longer doesn't really equal uh, you know, more rinsing. So I'm gonna take this out. Again, you can see that's pretty clear water. And I don't wanna felt it, it's hot still, So, but I am gonna just press it get some little water out but like not squeeze it around and then I'm going to take it and put it on this towel I'm gonna take this outside and dump it so I had this towel already and I'm just gonna basically lay it out I can tell I did not felt it so that's a good thing and I'm gonna roll up the towel and just press some of the water out and then I'll lay it out to dry on a sweater drying rack. I'm not gonna get aggressive with this. I just wanna let the towel absorb some water so I'll actually leave it and the towel will kinda like suck the water out of it to some extent and then I'll come back and put it on a sweater rack and I'll show you when it's all dry. So I'm gonna tear this out and then weigh what we've got after washing. So it is 4.4. Wow, okay, so that's good. If you divide 4.4 by three, you get 1.46 ounces. So that's what I'm going to aim for. Three packets of 1.46, it'll be close. We'll just get as close as we can. 1.45, okay, so we now have very, very close samples. I am going to card the first one, so let's go to the Strouch Finest. That's my pick for carding fleece that I'm processing myself. If I had to guess, I guess that this would be enough, two would be enough for this, but I never can really tell until I try it. Let's go card it. So this is such a small amount. I'm just gonna pick it while I am heating it in. And I am not gonna worry if there's anything on this carter, which, I mean, I can see that there is. So there's gonna be a little bit of sorry silk, probably, and sparkle. That's okay, I love it.
get under there. Okay. So I'm gonna show you up close. This is two times through. And uh, I'm on the fence a little. I think I'm gonna just go ahead and spin this after two times through. So that's awesome. We're good. We're ready to spin this. This is really nice. Whew. I'm just drafting it a bit. Because it was such a thin bat, I'm not gonna split it into roving. I'm just gonna like draft it into a roving. So now I'm gonna just give it the littlest bit of twist. That's just to hold it together really because it's gonna wanna drift apart. It's so airy. Oh, check that out. I'm gonna spin the crap out of this. Let's go spin it. Ready? I don't comb on my channel very often, so you're about to see some combing. Basically, you just take the locks out. This is going to have more loss than other methods, but um, but it's a really nice result. I just dropped some here. So you can see my comb is filled up, I don't know, maybe a third at the most. Where's my other one? I just wanna catch tips. That's it. Oh, that thing's gonna get on my nerves, but. We'll do it that way. There. I've never done it here before. I've always used like a big clamp. Just working my way towards the back. It's kind of feeling awkward with the camera right here, but we're going to do our best. And now I'll just, again, I just want tips. Oh, probably. But you can see it's really starting to fluff up. Generally, three is enough for me, three passes, but we'll see how this does. Oops, missed a little. This is combing really nicely too. Okay. I'm gonna scooch this I'm struggling to. There we go, that's probably better. Be very careful when you do this. They're sharp. I get a tetanus shot. I make sure it's up to date. 
because of this not joking i really do it is so easy to stab yourself with these because you're really focusing on the wool <laughs> and not as much see this is it's getting staticky but it's okay I do have some carding milk behind me but I don't really want to Okay, let's say we are about as far as we're gonna go. I just hate all the loss from combing, but cause see, I lost, this is all loss. But see the shortcuts in there? That's one of the things that's really awesome about it. Oh, this is my combed top doesn't that look good okay and I'm gonna make a little nest out of it I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna twirl my hands in opposite directions as I wind it around and that will give it just enough twist to hold it together I will make a little nest out of it basically pull the end in and you have this beautiful little combed top nest. Look at that baby. And it's got just enough of the silver in it to look a little bit silvery. How beautiful is that? Dang. All right, I'm gonna comb up the rest. I pull this out by the tips. I like to just grab a bunch of the tips and hold them all together. And that's how I pull out a lock. It's more than one lock, but I take the bat, the bottom, twist it at least once, sometimes twice, just kind of depends. Take your brush and bounce it through. See how easy that was? And then I twist it one more time and do the other side. See how fluffy, look at that. And then I let go and grab the ends that I just flicked, twist again, and bounce your brush through. Twist again, and do the other side. So now this is what I have. <laughs> this is what I have, and I'm gonna spin directly from this, but I'm gonna do a bunch of them so I can spin, you know, for a while. All right, I'm gonna go through these one by one. This is the um, carded long draw roving. It is super squishy. It was really springy. And I wanted to also show you each of the yarns. This is what the yarn looks like. These swatches were knit all with the same number of stitches and everything, but I did not try to make the yarns the same weight and they really aren't the same weight. So just in case you're wondering why the sizes are a little different, I wasn't really trying to go for that. I'm trying to go for, I don't know how to explain it, but the way I think of it is like how this wool wants to be in the different preps. So that's the first one. 
This one will be the combed with um, a worsted draw, so a short forward draw, completely different. That stitch definition is totally different. You can see it. It's really smooth. It made a really smooth yarn. This one is a three ply. Here's the actual yarn. You can see just a lot smoother. Um, and I did three ply it because the single, it was just so easy to spin really, really fine. That single, you know, if I had done a two ply, it would have been quite, quite fine. Uh, finer than sock yarn. So I didn't want that. So I did a three ply. It's chain plied. Really happy with this one. It is not, of course, as springy. When you comb and then use a worsted draft, you don't expect the same amount of spring. So it's still, just if I ball it, it's just very squishy still, but not as springy as the roving long draw. For cables, wouldn't this be amazing? Mm. And last, this is the Flicked locks. I spun them with a worsted draft, a short forward draw. So it's kind of a combo if you think about it. It's a woolen prep with a worsted draw, which, you know, it's helpful to see the combination. You got more just fuzz and a little bit more variation. And here is this yarn. I think this yarn all of them are really really pretty they all have a slightly crisp feeling like a slightly medium wool feeling that is something that i just love but they're not prickly or rough in fact i would say almost next to skin for me very hard to quantify that because everyone's threshold is different but it's so pretty this is roving with a woolen long draw this is combed with a short forward draw and this one is the flick blocks with a short forward draw as well. This tells me so much about how, you know, how I can prep this to get the end result I want and spin it. So this has been really, really useful exercise for me and oh God, this fleece was just so wonderful to work with. and it's so versatile I mean you can see I can do almost anything with it so successful so much information I learned so much I hope this helps some of you to think about how you might process fleeces and get the end results you want or find out what your end results will be and I will see you guys Friday with the next extravaganza video I will see you guys soon thanks I love you bye